Support for this podcast and the following message come from Money Mind from Prudential, a podcast powered by your financial behavior. Hear insights from financial psychologists, experts, and more. Download and subscribe to Money Mind wherever you find podcasts and learn more at slate.com slash money mind. Take Ask Me Another and more with you with the NPR One app. NPR One finds you the best from public radio and beyond. Songs we love, local stories, and your favorite podcasts. NPR One is ready to make driving, cooking, or cleaning the house better. Find NPR O-N-E in your app store. Warning, this podcast uses some unsavory language. Please be advised. From NPR and WNYC, coming to you from the Bell House in beautiful Brooklyn, New York, it's NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia, Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. We have a great show for you. Four brilliant contestants are backstage doing deep breathing exercises while they wait to play our nerdy games, but only one will become our big winner. And today's special guest star on the Crackle series, The Art of More. We have Dennis Quaid, Christian Cook, and Carrie Elwes. And the show is about what goes on behind the scenes in the high stakes world of art auctions. Now in the auction world, when you raise a wooden paddle, you're about to throw away a lot of money, but when I raise a wooden paddle, I'm about to get paid a lot of money. (laughs) And of course, the art auction scenario costs extra. Our first two contestants will play a trivia game about the foreign names of everyday products. Let's meet them. First up, Angeline Rodriguez. You're an editorial assistant. Welcome. Thank you. Angeline, your specialty is uh, sci-fi and fantasy books. Has working in that genre influenced how you see the future of humanity? Um, yeah, it's kind of making this impending dystopia a little more palatable. Because, I mean, at least, at least we're not getting, like, you know, probed by aliens. Uh, but at this point, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like you're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> Your opponent is Kate Fisher. You're a private tutor. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Kate, a private tutor. Or what do you... Who are you mostly tutoring? For uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers. And what's the hardest subject? A lot of kids have math phobia, so yeah. try to make that a little Still, more huh? Easier. Always. Always. Well, because every six years they come up with a new way to teach math. Right. <laughs> so. so, yeah, Kate, what's the right way to teach math? Two plus two equals four. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, what's, yeah. The, what's the alternate way to teach math? Two plus two plus two equals eight. Six? I, apparently I'm really good at what I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so we're starting with a trivia game called International Brands of Mystery. Many products available in the United States go by a completely different name in another country. So, Jonathan, how about an example? Sure. So in Quebec, KFC, or Kentucky Fried Chicken, is known as PFK, or Poulet Fruit Kentucky. (laughs) Makes it sound much more sophisticated. It's it's much more sophisticated. It's very good for you in (laughs) Quebec, so... So we're going to give you a brand's for name, and you're going to tell us what it's called in the USA. Okay? Get ready to buzz in. Here we go. Want a hamburger in Australia, the home of Kangaroo Jack? Hop on over to Hungry Jack's, where you can have it your way. Angeline. Jack in the box. I'm sorry, that is incorrect, but a good guess. Kate, can you steal? Quarter pounder. Okay, maybe I really have to explain the game again. <laughs> In this case, the answer was Burger King. Got it. Got it. You know what? The first one was the example. That's the, let's just say yeah, that. Yeah, that, that was it. First question was the example. That was a dry run. It's all good. <laughs> to clean up a mess in the UK, grab a bottle of Flash. Just know that no sexy bald man with a white T-shirt and earring is coming to help you. Angeline. Mr. Clean? You got it. Pretty sure that dude doesn't know how to clean. Yeah, he seems like he seems like he he uh, does other work in, yeah. <laughs> involving being huge and muscular. I mean, and not so much with the cleaning. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think he cleans. He knows how to clean up. Oh yeah, yeah. Angeline. I came here to do two things: clean the house and chew gum. How's it go? 
Teenage boys in New Zealand and China know the secret to getting a girl's attention is to cover yourself with way too much Lynx body spray. Kate. Axe body spray? Yeah. Mm. Mm. I like Lynx body spray as the... Classier. I know, it does sound, right? Axe sounds like, you know, it's going to hit you over the head. I smelled a lot the... of it with the kids I work with, so... Oh, yeah? They all smell like Axe? The boys. The teenage boys. The boys. They, well, they smell disgusting to begin with, right? <laughs> So yes, it's better. always. It's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. If you are backpacking across Europe and find yourself in a hairy situation, reach for a Wilkinson sword, Hydro 5, Quattro, or Quattro for women. Kate. Oh, uh, schick, schick, schick? What is it? It's a, the schick, right? Yeah, is that what it's called? <laughs> you had me at schick, Kate. You, you are correct. <laughs> In the UK, cheesy pasta still offers the delicious powder taste of sodium tripolyphosphate. Angeline. Kraft mac and cheese. That is correct. Yeah. Mm. These potato chips are like international spies, sort of, with different aliases <laughs> around the world. In Egypt, they're called Chipsy. In Mexico, Sabritas. In Colombia, Margarita. Bet you can't eat just one. Kate. Pringles. I'm sorry, that is incorrect, Angelina. Lay's? Lay's yeah. is the answer. You got it. Chipsy. I want a chip name. Chipsy. Chip, Chipsy. That's my Tinder name. <laughs> <laughs> this is your last clue. In much of the world, this chocolate ice cream bar is called a galaxy. But Prince's song is not similarly renamed When Galaxies Cry. Angeline. Dove. Dove Chocolate Bar is correct, yes. Puzziger Archung, how did our contestants do? Congratulations, Angeline. You're one step closer to the final round. <laughs> now we'll play a guessing game called Taxonomy. Anomaly. But first, let's check in with our contestants. Angeline Rodriguez, you studied linguistics. Yeah. And you have a superpower. Um, I would say, like, within, like, 99.9% .9 accuracy, I can guess the word that people are, like, trying to, like, work their way up to on the tip of their tongue. How? How do you do this? Magic. I don't know. <laughs> Too much time on the Internet. But One of those. Okay, but so if I'm talking to you and I'm reaching for a word, you'll mm -hmm. be able to tell me what it is. Hopefully. 99.9% .9 of the time. That's just... I mean, you might be the .01. I'm just trying to hedge oh, my bets I feel here. like I'm talking to Nate Silver over here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Most of the time you get it right. Most of the time. Okay, is there any commonality between the kind of words people are always trying to find? Um, it's usually one of those SAT words it is. that some high school teacher told you you should learn that's often like sounds like another word, but you misuse like prudent and repugnant. Right. Right. That per that's a perfect example. Word well families. Done. Kate Fisher, uh, I think everyone has a great story about like friends they met on a vacation, but I feel like you have taken it up a notch with your story. Yes. Uh, I accidentally made friends with RoboCop on the Amalfi Coast. <laughs> Are you still friends? Uh, no. What we, happened? We, we stupidly did not. We didn't know who he was at the time. He was just some man, Peter Weller, talking about his PhD and his dissertation advisor. And we thought, oh, he's interesting. And he and his wife invited us, m my family and I, to Venice for New Year's. And we were like, well, that was weird. And then we went home and Googled him. And we were like, oh. <laughs> did you go to Venice for New Year's? No. What are you doing? I blame my parents. It's, it's like what I do 99% of the, <laughs> 99 .9 of the time. time so. All right, so we're going to play a guessing game called Taxonomy Anomaly. I'm going to give you the name of an animal. All you have to do is tell me what kind of animal it is. And we're going to alternate back and forth, so no need to buzz in. Angeline, you won the last game, so win this, and you're going to the final round. Kate, you need to win this, or you have to sit through Art Chung's Sustainable Taxidermy Workshop. It's a two-week intensive. Fantastic. Okay. Here we go. Angeline, the mountain chicken, 
Is it a chicken, a goat, or a frog? I want to say a frog. It is a frog. Yes. It's one of the largest frogs in the world, but it tastes like chicken. Oh. That is a fact. Kate, the chicken turtle. Is it a chicken, a turtle, or a sloth? Turtle? Yes, it is a turtle. <laughs> but it also tastes like chicken. Angeline, the hummingbird hawk moth. Is it a hummingbird, a hawk, or a moth? This has to be a moth. Yeah, it's, it's a, a moth. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I've had some nightmares about that one. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah it's a moth that tells uh, powerful stories five to ten minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> Your story was so good last week. <laughs> Kate, the hellbender. Is it a salamander, a wolf, or a vulture? <laughs> The hellbender. Salamander. Yes, it is a salamander. <laughs> yeah. Angeline, the ard wolf. Is it an aardvark, a wolf, or a hyena? Uh, a hyena. Yes, it's a hyena. <laughs> okay. Kate, the peacock mantis shrimp. It's not a real thing, is it? Oh, it's real. But is it a peacock, a praying mantis, or a shrimp? Shrimp. It is a shrimp. <laughs> that makes the most disgusting shrimp cocktail. <laughs> it's very, you got to eat around a lot of stuff <laughs> to get to exactly. this thing. The peacock and the mantis. They uh, actually, they can punch with the speed equal to a 22 caliber bullet. This cannot possibly be a real animal. It's more it's like real. a headbutt. Angeline, the Japanese spider crab. Is it a spider, a crab, or an octopus? Oh, uh, this is definitely a crab. It is definitely a crab. Yeah. The world's yeah. biggest crab. Yeah, I specialize in terrifying arthropods. You do? Yeah, not really, but in, in my nightmares. <laughs> And that's one of them that comes after you, oh, the yeah. spider crab? Mm hmm Yeah. Kate, the panda ant. Is it a panda, an ant, or a wasp? Ant. Sorry, that is incorrect. Angeline, can you steal? A wasp? It is a panda. No, <laughs> it's a wasp. It is a wasp. It is a wasp. Okay. Puzzler Archung, how did our contestants do? They both did great. I'm afraid we'll have to say goodbye to Kate, but congratulations, Angeline. You're moving on to the final round. Coming up, we'll find out who will face off against Angeline in our final round at the end of the show. And as you wish, actor Carrie Elwes will pick his poison in a battle of wits. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> Just a quick shout out to our sponsor who brings you this message, Zip Recruiter. They understand that posting your job in one place isn't enough to find quality candidates. If you want to find the perfect hire, you need to post your job on all of the top job sites. And now you can. With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post your job to 100 plus job sites, including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. Right now, Ask Me Another listeners can post jobs on Zip ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash another. Here's another shout out to one of our sponsors who brings you this message, Casper, an online mattress retailer. The Casper mattress is designed and developed in the USA and engineered for comfort. They use two technologies, latex foam and memory foam, to give just the right amount of sink and bounce, and they have a risk-free trial. Try out your Casper mattress for 100 nights with free delivery and returns, along with a special offer for listeners. Go to casper.com slash another and use the promo code another to redeem $50 towards a Casper mattress. Terms and conditions apply. This is Ask Me Another, NPR's hour of puzzles, word games, and trivia. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Art Chung, and now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. 
Thank you, Jonathan. We'll hear our music parody from Jonathan in just a little bit. But first, it's time to welcome one of our special guests. You know him from The Princess Bride and Saw. He's currently starring in the Crackle series, The Art of More. It's Carrie Elwes. Carrie, welcome to Ask Me Another. Thank you for having me. Yeah, pleasure. Carrie, The Princess Bride came out in 1987, but then 27 years later, after this cult classic, you wrote a book about behind the scenes and stories from the movie. Yes. How did you remember the anecdotes? <laughs> it's a good question. Actually, I remember maybe, maybe two or three stories from the, from the making of the film. <laughs> I said, well, let me see if I can figure something out. So I called Norman Lear. Norman Lear, for those of you who don't know, Norman Lear is one of the great film producers of all time. And he personally put up the money for The Princess Bride. He took a huge chance on me because I was an unknown actor at the time. I took him to lunch. By the way, whenever I take Norman to lunch, I always pay because I always <laughs> say to him, you know, I owe you, man. So, uh, and he said, well, don't worry about it, Carrie. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to send you all the call sheets from the making of the film. Now, the call sheets, for those of you who don't know, are the work orders that we, the actors and the crew, get that tell you what scene you're shooting that day, uh, rehearsals, all of that. And sure enough, a week later, this beautiful bound set of call sheets arrived at my house. And the very first one was my rehearsal time to go and study fencing. <laughs> and uh, it was like I was back there from 27 years ago. It was amazing. I suddenly remembered everything. Uh, it was incredible. I couldn't believe that my memory was that good after all the damage I've done to my brain uh, over the years. <laughs> you worked with two of the greatest comedy directors yes. uh, of all time. Thank you. Uh, you worked with Rob Reiner, and also you worked with Mel Brooks in Robin Hood Men in Tights. So what makes a great comedy director for you? Somebody who has a sense of humor? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I figured Mel Brooks had one. I grew up with his movies. I was the school projectionist at school. I used to run Mel Brooks movies, and that made me insanely popular. So, I mean, we watched Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein, the producers, like 50 times. So when I got the call from him, he goes, Hi, this is Mel Brooks. And I went, yeah, right. And I hung up on him. Well, I mean, I mean right? I thought, it's one of my friends playing a joke on me. And then the phone rang again. He went, don't hang up, don't hang up. And, I, yeah, so that's how that happened. But you started in the movie business as a, as a production assistant, as a teenager. As a PA, yeah. And uh, worked with a bunch of great actors, including uh, Marlon Brando. Yes. There's got to be a story from that. Yes, Marlon. That was on Superman. I stood in for an AD who was missing that week, and uh, it was weird. The third AD who introduced me to him said, okay, so look, your job is just to get Marlon out of his trailer. <laughs> Because Marlon was being paid a million dollars overages each day. So he had no incentive to be on time. And so I was nervous as heck, right? And we go to his trailer and we knock on the door. Yeah, who is it? And the third AD goes, uh, Mr. Brando, we have a new PA here. And I'm just quivering in my shoes, right? He goes, who is this guy? And he said, oh, Mr. Brando, this is Carrie Always. He goes, no, no, it's not. He goes, no, no, you're a... Uh, your name is Rocky. <laughs> and from there on in, he called me Rocky, right? I don't know why. So yeah. then when you become an actor after dealing with this, were you just extra sensitive about being uh, super easy? And... Totally. Yeah. Well, look, it's a great film school for, for a kid. My stepfather was a producer. I'd always wanted to be in show business. And so when he came into my life and he told my brothers and myself, he said, look, if you want to be in this business, you're all going to have to start at the bottom. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, you're going to be gophers. He was from Harlem. You're going to be gophers. You know what a gopher is? I go, no. He goes, you go for this and you go for that. <laughs> you make the coffee, you make the tea, you print the call sheets. That's what you do. So that's what I did. I got a massive overdose of gamma radiation from the Xerox machine and just printing call sheets, you know. By the time I stepped in front of the camera, I, I was very comfortable. It was, it was great. Now, in The Art of More, you play an art collector. On the series Psych, you played an art thief. Yes. So people must look at you, casting-wise, and go, sophisticated, <laughs> accent, art. Yes. Right? I guess so. 
I know, it's weird. This one was really fun, something I could really get into. I grew up in the art world. My mm -hmm. real father was a portrait painter. I went to a lot of auctions as a kid and galleries. And so I'd met people like Davenport. The character felt very comfortable. I already knew it. I already knew it. Okay, well, uh, we have a great Ask Me Another challenge for you that I think you'll enjoy. Are you ready for an Ask Me Another challenge? I'm ready. Challenge? Lay it on me. Very good. Carrie Elwes. <laughs> so, Carrie, I have to tell you, we were inspired by your iconic scene in The Princess Bride where you challenge Wallace Shawn okay. <laughs> to a battle of wits. Great. So in this game, you'll answer questions to extract yourself from a series of life-threatening scenarios. So this would be the battle of twits. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. You'll see what I mean? Good. Uh, so here we go. Okay. Here are two goblets. One's filled with red wine. The other's filled with white. One of these is poisoned to avoid death. Choose the type of wine that is the most popular across the world. Is it red or is it white? Um, I would have to say red. Yes, of course it's uh. red, yeah. <laughs> Cabernet, number one. Merlot, number two. two. Number three is my favorite, boxed. <laughs> <laughs> Here are two salads, but one salad's dressings reached its sell-by date two weeks ago. To avoid the expired dressing, choose the salad with the most popular dressing in North America. Is it ranch or Italian? Ranch. You are so correct. You are so correct. Undisputed king of salad dressing. Uh, yes. All right, here's your final one. Here are two glasses of tap water from two different United States. One state's water tastes slightly worse than the other one. According to the 2016 International Water Tasting Awards, which sounds like the most sober event of all time. <laughs> Which state has the best tasting tap water? Is it Colorado or California? Ooh, I've not tasted the tap water in Colorado. By the way, I hear New York has the best tap water. Yeah. Right? Am I right? Right. I would have to go with California. I'm sorry, that is Cal incorrect. Wow. California did place four. Colorado was number one in the U.S. Wow. Turns out, uh, you did enough to win. <laughs> Carrie, you did enough to win. Love it. Give it up for Carrie Elwes. Our next two contestants will turn and face a strange music parody game. So let's meet them. First up, Kaya Lyons. You're a law fellow at the American Constitution Society in D.C. That's right, yeah. Kaya, what, uh, what inspired you to, to defend civil rights? I've wanted to be a lawyer since I was four. I was one of those really weird kids who woke up one day and decided what I wanted to be. But yeah, I'm really passionate about women's rights. I heard a Martina McBride song once when I was eight, and I was like, yes. That needs to be done. <laughs> Which one? I don't know. It's like that one with the music video where there's like a burning house, Independence Day. Is yeah, that one? sure. And I was it. like, that's not cool. Very good. Your opponent is J.J. Maxwell. You work in communications for a design firm. Welcome. Well, thank you. J.J., your tech firm developed an Ada Lovelace robot. Now I know Ada Lovelace is known as a first computer programmer. What's an Ada Lovelace robot? Oh, yeah. She's amazing. We just had her in New York, and now she's going to Beijing. But she, we programmed her to look at your face and then go around and silently judge you and then draw your portrait for a take-home and look at it like a real artist. We're basically Westworld in, like, 20 years. <laughs> so get ready. Yeah. The silently judge thing, how do you program that? You know, um, again, I'm the communications media. I'm more street smarts for the company. Okay, got so, it. Uh, <laughs> just, if she gets really testy, I just say, go tell everybody. It's fine. Just, you know, let her be. Do you like interacting? Have you interacted with Ada? Oh, yeah. We have had a really special bond in the last couple yeah. months, and uh, it's deep and it's real. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Remember, Kai and JJ, the first of you who wins two of our games will move on to our final round at the end of the show. Let's go to your first game. So your first challenge is a parody music game about changes. Jonathan Colton. Yes, so we rewrote David Bowie's song Changes to be about things that change <laughs> or get changed. Okay. <laughs> Buzz in when you know what I'm singing about, and the winner will be one step closer to moving on to the final round at the end of the show. Are you ready? Oh, ready. yeah. Ready. Okay, here we go. Thank you. 
Still don't know what I was waiting for so it makes the night last long But it just slipped my mind and Every time I thought I'd sprung ahead It seems instead I fell behind Kaya Daylight savings time? Yes, correct mm. So I turned on my ignition And the engine got too hot from the lack of lubrication I meant to change this, but I forgot Kaya Alternator? Is that a thing in a car? That is definitely yeah. a thing in the car <laughs> But it's not what we're looking for JJ, do you know the answer? Changing the oil Changing the oil, <laughs> that's right ch 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 changes Turn your laptop on ch ch changes your login should be pickier. Ch 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 changes. Turn your laptop on. Ch ch changes. Hey mom, you have to make it trickier. It's way too easy. Just one, two, three, four. Kaya. Changing your password. You got it. Changing your password. Do you know what your mom's password is? Um, I know what it is for most things because I use her DirecTV password to watch anything. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> does she know that you use her DirecTV password? If she doesn't, she does now because she's over there. Okay. So. <laughs> JJ, are you familiar with your parents' passwords? Uh, my mom uses mine, and the Netflix queue gets pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more, JJ. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of like rom coms, and also like any HD TV that can be there. But then she'll go get like dark and the good stuff. I'm like, Mom, you're binge watching Daredevil. You're, I, <laughs> you're retired now. That's cool. Yeah. And these archetypes that you spit on when you tell the jokes you do. They're just trying to fix the darkness Who cares how many it takes to unscrew JJ Light bulb? Yeah, that's yeah, right, right. Yeah. We've but never heard from the point of view of the filament <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, technically, first to change a light bulb You have to unscrew the light bulb Nobody talks about it, I'm just trying to raise awareness That's true, that's true. <laughs> This is your last clue. Ch 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 changes. Turn and face your face. Ch ch changes. Don't tell me the gray is getting noticed now. Ch 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 changes. Turn and face your face. Ch ch changes. A shame, but I can hide it, and I know how. Time may change me, but not on my head. JJ, hair. Gray hair. Yeah, hair yeah, color. Yeah, yes, hair color, that's yeah, what we're looking yeah. for. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Art Chung, how did our contestants do? Well done, JJ. You're one step closer to moving on to the final round. Kaya and JJ, we've got a word game for you called the nth degree. In this game, you'll add the letter N to a common name or expression to turn it into something else. So for an example, let's go to our puzzle guru, our Chung. So if I said add N to a glum person and he becomes a bag you might use for flood protection, you would say sand sack, adding the letter N to sad sack. Yeah. Okay. okay. See? <laughs> Are you comfortable with the premise? Game on. Very good. So, JJ, you won the last game, so you win this, and you're going to the final round. Kaya, you need to win this, or you'll have to go home and write a think piece for Medium about what went wrong today. <laughs> okay. okay. Add N to an awkward dinner with two couples, and it becomes an even more awkward reading of two works by the author of The Divine Comedy. You can ring in and talk it out. Kaya. So, I think the first part is... Double date. Right. So maybe something like Dublin date? Divine comedy. Does that ring a bell to you? Not at all. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> JJ, can you steal? Double dating? <laughs> oh, sorry. At least we're both awful. This is the tenth circle of hell. <laughs> okay. 
Dante's Inferno, oh, the Inferno Dante we were looking for, so then it would become double Dante because oh. you add an N to the. Oh. Gotcha. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. All right. <laughs> Not an easy game. Here's your next one. Add N to a place where you talked to friends back when you had an AOL account, and it becomes a place where monks drone on in unison. Kaya. Chantrum. Yes. Yeah. I did it. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Add N to the face covering you'd wear to hit the slopes or rob a bank, and it becomes a face covering worn by Hannibal Lecter. Kaya. Skin mask. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, not my favorite kind of mask. <laughs> Add N to one of the Golden Girls actresses, and she becomes a magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot. Kaya. Bean Arthur. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe we've come to our final clue, doesn't it? <laughs> we've all come a long way. Add N to a venomous spider and it becomes a glass wall opening that's hard to see through. JJ. Black Window. Black Window is correct. Puzziger, Archung, how did our contestants do? Well, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Kaya. You've tied it up one game apiece, so I'm going to give you a quick tiebreaker round. I'm going to give you a category, and you're going to go back and forth naming things that fall into that category. The first contestant to mess up, either by guessing incorrectly, repeating an answer, or taking too long, will be eliminated. Buzz in to answer first. Here's your category. Name the 12 animals in the Chinese zodiac. JJ, you go first. Pig? Pig is correct. Kaya? Dog? Dog is also correct. JJ. Rat. That's right. Kaya. Rabbit. Rabbit is correct. JJ. Bull. We'll accept bull. We're looking for ox. Ter but okay, that's, a, terrific, that's correct. Terrific. Kaya, your turn. Um, is sheep one? I'm sorry, Kaya. Sheep was wrong. The other possible answers were dragon, goat, horse, monkey, rooster, snake, and tiger. So that means, JJ, you're moving on to the final round. <laughs> It's settled. Our finalists are Angeline and JJ, and they'll face off in the final round at the end of the show. And if you hear the word contestant and immediately anagram it to not 10 cats, then you should be not 10 cats on our show. Go to amatickets.org. Coming up, we've got Dennis Quaid and Christian Cook from The Art of More, and they'll find out which item is worth more, Pharrell's hat or Gary Coleman's sweatpants. I'm Ophira Eisenberg, and you're listening to Ask Me Another from NPR. Support for Ask Me Another and the following message comes from the new original comedy, Search Party, on TBS. An official selection at the 2016 South by Southwest Film Festival, watch the mystery unravel as a lost soul and her group of friends search for a missing girl they barely even knew. You can binge the entire season of Search Party in one week starting Monday, November 21st at 11, 10 Central on TBS. To understand your spouse, your co-workers, and your friends a little bit better, check out the Hidden Brain Podcast. Each week, the show looks at human behavior and how our unconscious minds shape our view of the world. It will help you think differently about yourself and those around you, and give you plenty to talk about around the water cooler or at dinner tonight. You can find Hidden Brain now on the NPR One app and at npr.org slash podcasts. This is NPR's Ask Me Another. I'm Jonathan Colton, here with puzzle guru Art Chung. Now here's your host, Ophira Eisenberg. Thank you, Jonathan. Soon we'll find out which of our contestants, Angeline or JJ, will be today's big winner. But first, it's time to welcome our next special guest. They also star in the Crackle series, The Art of More. Please welcome Dennis Quaid and Christian Cook. Welcome to Ask Me Another. Wow. 
Uh, Dennis Quaid, you have a very impressive, I mean, I don't need to tell you, IMDb page resume. You have been in so many great projects. But I heard that once a long time ago, you actually uh, worked as a clown. At yes, a I pla- was, a clown at Astroworld. What is Astroworld? It's the wonderful place of fun, fun, fun. <laughs> And Astroworld is located in... Houston, Texas, uh, or was. It's no longer here. I think it was a liability issue. (laughs) Was being a clown a fun job? Well, um, the breaks in between uh, being a clown were great. We would be inside the firehouse there at uh, Astroworld, and uh, we would play poker for paychecks, basically, (laughs) is what we did. Uh, But then we would go out and uh, be beaten up by eight- or nine-year-old kids for most of the day. Because kids do not like clowns. Right. At all. They're scared. (laughs) No, it's carte blanche to kick and hit and... uh, Whatever. That's what went and on. And what was the paycheck? Was it pretty good? Uh, it, was, it was a full uh, $2.85 an hour, as I recall. <sighs> now, we're talking 70s money now. That was pretty good. Yeah. That could get you home on the bus. Yes. Well, do you still have the outfit? Paid for my uh, Ford Falcon. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Now, Christian Cook, I know you started acting young, age 10, you were already... Yeah, 9, 10, yeah. 9, yeah, 10. So yeah. along the way, did you have to deal with any odd jobs to uh, get through your acting chops? Um, I don't think so. I don't, I'm not particularly odd. Uh, just very varied and uh, strange. They're all quite strange in their own ways, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, no clown no. issues. Yeah, although I'd quite like to see you in that suit one day. <laughs> <laughs> not in a sexual way, of course. Yeah, in a, in a nice way. Or maybe in a sexual way. (laughs) We're all open. Okay. Whatever floats your boat. (laughs) You guys actually have a couple things in common other than starring in the same show. Because I like this timing, Dennis, in 2015, People Magazine named you one of the sexiest men alive. Uh, Question, what took them so long? And (laughs) did you resent, like... All those sit-ups, all those abs over the years that did not get enough notice? Well, you know, it's something you work on for decades. <laughs> <laughs> you have a dream, you have a goal. And, uh, you know, it's not about winning, it's about getting there. <laughs> so, I'll let other people be the judge. Okay, perhaps. very good. Christian, people named you Sexiest Man of the Week in December 2015. Of the week? Yeah. What was he? He was of the year. Fuck that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. He was alive. I was just one of, the, alive. one of the. One of the. One of the. One of the. It was, you were, a, it you was were a good the, week. You were the only sexy man of that week. <laughs> I, but you don't even remember. I, I, no one told me. <laughs> you didn't know that? So you, I don't th- I, no, I never knew that. Oh, it's yeah. Great. It was a, a full week. Very proud. <laughs> Very proud of that. Dennis, it seems that you pick your hobbies according to the movies that you were in. That's pretty much true. Because I I didn't know that you were a huge cyclist, and that is directly related to the fact that you were in that amazing movie, Breaking Away, 1979, coming-of-age movie. Yeah. I didn't actually pick up cycling until 30 years after I did the film, but yes... And now you guys, you guys gather all the cast members for, like, cycling um, enthusiasts? We got together, actually, last year at, at a cycling convention. We hadn't really been around each other, all four of us, yeah. in the same room for a while. It was great. It was fantastic. So how, uh, how much are you biking around? Biking around? Just, like, uh, 30 miles a day. Are you serious? He'd like, yeah, he does a lot. Well, it's fun. I, you know, uh, I, get, I feel like I'm 12 years old when I get on the bike, yeah. and the, I get to wear that you know, that silly lycra and everything, which is kind of feeds uh, a certain thing for me. Uh And um, it's good. (laughs) And then after the right stuff, you got your pilot's license. Yes. During the right stuff, I got my pilot's license. Yeah. They didn't know I had my license. Why weren't you allowed to? Well, well, you were liability. Oh, just right. It's all about liability. Okay. Got it. Got it. So all of a sudden you were like, oh no, I'm actually flying in this scene. How about that? (laughs) It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, if, I mean, it's easy, you know, to get off. Landing is hard. Flying is easy. Landing is hard. In, in season one of the show, we were shooting in this airplane hangar. This was a ca- kind of a strange moment for me, a kid from North England. And uh, we were in this airplane hangar, and I sh- saw this plane, and I was like, this is a pretty impressive plane. And Dennis goes, I used to have one of those. <laughs> They're very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> 
So let's talk about your show, The Art of More. It's about the seedy underbelly of the art auction world. Now, Dennis, you play Samuel Bruckner, a power-hungry real estate tycoon trying to launch a political career. It sounds pretty far-fetched. Are you worried that (laughs) audiences will just not believe this character at all? (laughs) Well, uh, that's what I'm banking on, (laughs) that they want the... Yeah, but Chuck Rose uh, wrote this part and wrote the scripts, you know, on our first season, which was a year and a half ago. And mm-hmm. we were two months into filming. And then uh, Trump announced for that he was running. And then I'm, I'm watching and his, my dialogue is coming out of his mouth. <laughs> and uh, it was... Uh, Chilling, I imagine. Yes, it was. How, do you enjoy digging your uh, teeth into this kind of character? It, it's fun to play. Yeah. You can say anything you want. <laughs> If yeah. you say it, it's true. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's, exactly. I, this is all a little eerie, frankly. Now, Christian, I know that The Art of More is scripted, but uh, I'm told that you like to improvise a little bit and at one point improvised yourself into the hospital. Yeah, I broke my hand. Um, I was actually, I did it because I was really annoyed the fact that they were about to call cut and wrap the night and it was like, because it was midnight and I was pissed off that I wasn't going to get any more takes. So in the scene, I took that out literally in the scene and I punched the table and collapsed and, uh, yeah, broke my hand. But the, the, the most painful thing was when the doctor came to set the next day and said to me, um, I have to re-break it because it's not in the right place. I said, okay, so when do we do that? He said, well, I can do it now if you want. So they took me into the producer's trailer and uh, the medic pinned me down. And, uh, and, and Put a the, stick in your mouth. Uh, yeah, somewhere, I don't know. And... Uh, <clears throat> And the doctor proceeded to uh, yank my uh, finger and put it in the right place. And it was horrible. Oh, yeah. and, and then they're like, good to go, back yeah. to work. Yeah. Don't improvise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Note to actors, yeah. don't improvise. All right, you two, are you ready for an Ask Me Another Challenge? Let's do yes. it. Yes. I am so ready. All right. Ready to receive. So your show, The Art of More, is about New York auction houses. So that's the inspiration for your challenge. I'm going to list unique items that were actually sold at an auction. Okay. You'll want to choose the item that you think sold for the most amount of money or at least more than your opponents. For example, if your choices were between Pharrell's hat or Gary Coleman's sweatpants, you would want to pick Pharrell's hat. (laughs) For a number of reasons, but (laughs) in this case, because Arby's bought it for $44,000, Gary Coleman's sweatpants sold to Jimmy Kimmel for only 500 bucks. Buzz in to pick first. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. Which sold for more? A self-portrait of Joni Mitchell drawn in ink and felt-tip pen, a nude sketch of Lady Gaga drawn by Tony Bennett, or a painting of a cow by James Franco titled Cow Painting Six. Christian. See, I want to say Joni Mitchell, but probably the James Franco thing. Okay, that's your choice. Dennis, what do you choose? I bought that James Franco. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going with it. <laughs> you have to pick a different one. Oh, well, okay then. I got to go with Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell. <laughs> All right, turns out that in this case, Dennis, you got the point. It actually was the Lady Gaga was the most expensive, $30,000, drawn by Tony Bennett. The guy doesn't draw. It's very weird. Uh, Joni Mitchell one went for $10,000. James Franco's cow painting number six went for five grand. Hmm. Cow number seven Hmm. might go for more. Hmm. (laughs) He's been working on cows for a long time. He'll get it. Okay. All right. Which one sold for the most? A cheese pizza that resembled Jesus' face? A grilled cheese sandwich that resembled the Virgin Mary's face? Or a cornflake shaped like Illinois? Christian. The, the cornflake thing? You choose cornflake. Dennis, what's Do, your... Doesn't every cornflake look like Illinois? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to go with... Uh, I, I'm always going to go with Jesus. I like how you think, but I'm sorry that it's incorrect. In this case, the cornflake is, was sold for slightly more than the cheese pizza that looked like Jesus. Really? The one that sold for the most was the grilled cheese sandwich. That was $28,000. I want to see a picture of the people that are buying these. Uh, okay. Elvis Presley's hair, Justin Bieber's hair, Willie Nelson's hair. Christian. Probably Justin Bieber's hair. Okay, you're going with Bieber. Dennis, do you have a 
I'm going to have to go with Elvis. You are correct. Yes. Uh, Elvis's hair, $115,000. Justin Bieber, only 41. Amazing. Here's your next one. Michael Jordan's used dream team uniform used. A piece of wedding cake from Queen Elizabeth II's wedding in 1947 or a piece of toast half eaten by a member of One Direction. <laughs> Christian. The cake from Elizabeth. Okay, Dennis. Well, I guess I'm going to go with One Direction. <laughs> Got to. Yeah, that half Jesus, piece. Elvis in One Direction. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That toast had a little Vegemite on it, and it went for $100,000. The cake, a truly iconic piece of history, of edible history, went for $2,800. All right, this is your last clue. Madonna's 1971-72 to 72 junior high school yearbook. Madonna's signed check for $80, used to pay for a massage. Or Madonna's used MX card cut in half. Christian? I think the first, the first one. The yearbook, the junior yeah, yeah, high school yeah, definitely. yearbook. Yeah, definitely, 100%. All right, Dennis, what do you think? I'm going to go with the canceled MX card. Mm. The MX card cut in half. You are correct. That went for $7,000. <laughs> yearbook only uh, I figure there was 400 bucks. copies of that yearbook. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's, really, copies. that's exactly. really clever. Only yeah. one Amex. But the check is ridiculous. Who, first of all, who writes a check for a massage? Weird, right? Yeah. If you're in a pinch. <laughs> yeah, like she's ever been in a pinch. <laughs> <laughs> Archung, how did they do? They both did great. Congratulations to Dennis. You won and asked me another Ruby Q. Really? How's that? Oh, wow. A, a come from behind victory. Thank you guys so much thank for you. playing thank you so much, with so us. Much. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Christian Cook and Dennis Quaid. Season two of The Art of More is on Crackle. Let's hear it one more time for Dennis Quaid, Christian Cook. Now it's time to crown our big winner. Let's bring back our finalists, Angeline, who edits books that make our impending dystopia more palatable, and JJ, who works for a company that builds judgy robots. <laughs> Puzzler Archung, take it away. Thanks, Ophira. Angeline and JJ, your final round is named, let's call the whole thing off. All the answers in this round will contain the word off in it. So if I said, a high school senior ditches class to ride around Chicago in this 1986 comedy, you'd say, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. We're going to play this round like a penalty shootout. You'll each get up to eight questions. The contestant who scores the most points will be our big winner. Your prize is an Ask Me Another Rubik's Cube signed by Christian Cook, Carrie Elwes, and Dennis Quaid. We flipped a coin backstage, and Angeline is going first. Here we go. Angeline, it's a short road drivers use to exit a highway. Oh, uh, an off-ramp? That's correct. <laughs> JJ, it's a way to tell a journalist in advance, don't quote me on that. Off the record. That's right. <laughs> Angeline, from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, the Queen of Hearts yells this catchphrase. Off with their head. That's right. <laughs> JJ, in Zoolander, it's how Derek and Hansel settled their score on the runway. A walk-off. It's a walk-off. Yeah. Angeline, he played Ron Swanson on the NBC sitcom Parks and Recreation. That would be Nick Offerman. That's right. <laughs> JJ, it's an ABC comedy about a Taiwanese family in 1990s America. Fresh off the boat. That's right. <laughs> Angeline, when you drive a vehicle on a dirt path or other unpaved surface. Off-roading. That's right. <laughs> JJ, this hunky actor starred in TV shows like Knight Rider and Baywatch. David Hasselhoff. That's right. You're at the halfway point, and you're tied up at four points each. Angeline, Michael Jackson's 1979 album contained the songs Rock With You and Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. Oh, gosh. Mm. Three seconds. Offbeat. I don't know. No, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. We're looking no. for Off the Wall. <sighs> JJ, a conciliatory present you would give to a rival. Three seconds. I don't know. We're looking for peace offering. Oh. Angeline, 
1985 rom-com where John Cusack wants his life to be over after his high school girlfriend dumps him? Um, mm. Three seconds. Any idea? I'm real young. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's say... Uh, mm, mm, uh, uh. Sorry, we were looking for Better Off Dead. Great. <laughs> JJ, in the musical West Side Story, a group of Jets make fun of this police sergeant. Oh, I'm not that good with that stuff. Um, I joined a gay book club. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't Any know. answers? I'm no? not that tight. I don't no? know. <laughs> Sorry. We were Sorry. looking for Officer Krupke, oh. which is a song. All right, we are down to your last question. The score is tied. We started well. I know. What happened to us? Angeline, when you buy a piece of clothing that's not tailored specifically for you, it's known as this. Off the rack. That is correct. (laughs) JJ, you need this answer to stay in the game. Got it. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, all right, sorry, all right. He's the co-creator of HBO's Game of Thrones. George, um, George, three seconds, George Whiteoff. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm sorry. Uh, George R. R. Martin wrote the books, but we were looking for David Benioff. So by a score of five to four, congratulations, Angeline. You're our winner. (laughs) Thank you so much to J.J. Congratulations, Angeline. That's our show. Ask Me Another's puzzle guru is Art Chung. Hey, my name anagrams to Narc Thug. Our house musician is Jonathan Colton. Now, Jolta Cannon. Our puzzles were written by Matt Foster, Andrew Kane, Jess Miller, and senior writers Karen Lurie and Dan Schofield. Ask Me Another's produced by Mike Kassif, Travis Larchuk, Julia Melfi, Denny Shin, Ramel Wood, and our intern, Camila Salazar, along with Steve Nelson and Anya Grunman. We are recorded by Bill Moss, Noriko Akabe, and Nate Kinsella. Ask Me Another was created by Eric Newsom and Jesse Baker. We'd like to thank our home in Brooklyn, New York, The Bell House. Hot Heel Blues. And our production partner, WNYC. I'm her ripe begonias. Oh, Fira Eisenberg. And this was Ask Me Another from NPR. <laughs> Hey, it's Ophira Eisenberg here. Now, I know if you made it to this point in the podcast, you are a fan of our show. Thank you so much. So, why don't you do us a favor and rate us on iTunes? Or better yet, leave us a review. Your support helps other people find our podcast. Thank you. Next time on Ask Me Another, we meet NPR's Tiny Desk contest winner, Galen Lee. She performs her winning song and then quizzes NPR Music's Bob Boylan about things you can find in a desk. Ibuprofen, Advil. Rhymes with Xylenol. Oh, Tylenol. Join me, Ophira Eisenberg, on NPR's Out.